history repeats itself. God damn it, Activision, you had to do it again, didn't you? On the 20th anniversary of Neversoft's founding, the studio famously known for kickstarting the Tony Hawk's Pro Skater series was shut down and unfortunately merged into Infinity Ward to make uh, Call of Duty games. Mission failed. We'll get them next time. And while Call of Duty is one of the best-selling franchises of all time, especially with their strong comeback with the recent success of Infinity Ward's Modern Warfare and Warzone, it's kind of depressing to find out that the team that changed the gaming world with the Tony Hawk game series, as well as other fantastic titles such as Spider-Man on the PS1 and Guitar Hero 3 Legends of Rock are now just part of the first-person shooter machine. There is something so iconic about booting up a Neversoft title and seeing that eyeball getting skewered. You knew you were in for a Good time. In fact, some of my first gaming memories come from playing 2000's Spider-Man on a PS1, avoiding that creepy yellow smog below the buildings, sneaking through the bank, feeling the pressure from the fantastically unnerving soundtrack, and frantically running through the vents away from Venom. Later in my childhood, I went on to fall in love with Tony Hawk's Underground 2 and American Wasteland, as well as Guitar Hero 3 Legends of Rock, pushing my love for rock music and even introducing me to Weezer's Blue Album. Come on, where would we be without Blue Album? But unfortunately, as much as I loved Modern Warfare 3 back in the day, it seemed as if parent company Activision were testing the studio out in 2011 to see how well they would cope shifting from such charismatic and chaotic games into producing a Call of Duty title every other year. And thus, 20 years to the date of being founded, Neversoft marked the end of their legacy by burning the skewered eyeball sculpture they had at their office. But this wasn't the first time that Activision had disbanded one of their teams of great game developers and turned them into tiny little cogs in the gigantic Activision money machine. And unfortunately, this wouldn't be the last time either. Oh, radical. Perhaps you recognize that intro from one of the most memorable experiences from the PS2 and Xbox original era of gaming. Responsible for the hit platformer driving hybrid Simpsons Hit and Run, Radical Entertainment also worked on some later games in the Crash Bandicoot franchise, which explains why the same coin sound from Hit and Run is in Crash of the Titans, as if anybody played it. And they also notably developed both Prototype 1 and its sequel, but unfortunately, Jeez, there seems to be a pattern here. Prototype 2, despite being the studio's biggest launch to date, failed to reach 1 million sales within its first two months, and so the studio were massively downsized in 2012, and though apparently still existing, are now just a support factory for Activision. Ah, oh, Activision, where game developers go to be crushed down into tiny, dull shells of their former selves. And unfortunately, this has happened all over again with another extremely promising studio. On January 22nd, 2021, Activision handed over soon to be 31 year old game developers Vicarious Visions to Blizzard Entertainment. You know Blizzard, the parent company to IPs such as World of Warcraft and Hearthstone and Overwatch and Overwatch 2. Oh my God, Overwatch 2. But Blizzard is a subsidiary of Activision Blizzard. So they basically just took the company and gave it to themselves. Hey Activision! Why hello, Activision! <laughs> hey, how's it going? How's it going? Pretty good, thanks. We just made another million on COD Points alone this week, so... Another million? <laughs> what? That is fantastic. What are you, uh, what have you been up to? Oh, right now? <laughs> I'm just shutting down another one of our subsidiaries, actually. Another one? <laughs> you must be going for that promotion. Yo, you already know. You know it. Speaking of, actually, have I got a company for you. Come on, hit me, hit me. Ever heard of uh, Vicarious Visions? You know I have Activision. We own them. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, well anyway, I want you to have them. N no. No. <laughs> oh my, oh my god, thank you so much. The, the transition will be so easy too because, because we- Because we already own them, exactly. Wow, so, so when can we expect them? Well, I'll speak you next Thursday actually. Your... Sorry, are you talking to yourself? <laughs> no. As you can see, I'm actually on the phone at the moment. A very important business call, actually. That is literally a screenshot of a phone call that's been going on for two seconds. Do you mind if I just call you back in a minute? Now, they'll be switching their priorities from working on series such as Tony Hawk, Crash Bandicoot, Destiny, Skylanders, and Guitar Hero uh, to be working as a support team for Overwatch 2. Presumably. 
Presumably. Hey, it's me from the future to tell you that since recording this video, Vicarious Visions have finally made a statement about this merger with the new studio head, Simon Najiba. Sorry if I butchered that. Basically saying that the studio had made a good relationship with Blizzard and saying, quote, we're just really excited for the future together. I'm not sure if that's a sentiment shared by everyone. However, reportedly, they'll also be teaming up with the group of developers that made Diablo 4 to remaster Diablo 2. So as doom and gloom as this video may seem in parts, the studio head, at least, appears to be positive about the future, but hopefully they're well utilized at Blizzard, rather than just being left as a support team. Vicarious Visions were founded in 1990, and in their 30 years of activity, they did a lot. They mostly made a name for themselves in the early 2000s with Game Boy ports of Neversoft titles, ironically, such as Tony Hawk's Pro Skater and Spider-Man. However, they made an impact with their work on various Star Wars games for the Xbox, and I'm sorry, but Finding Nemo on the Game Boy Advance was fucking great. I didn't know they made that game until now, and I just want to thank them for their service. They almost broke their way into the AAA world in 2008 with Call of Duty Roman Wars. You're probably wondering what the hell that is. Well, it was a Call of Duty title set in ancient Rome following Julius Caesar. However, it was later cancelled despite a promising prototype, and then after that, it wouldn't be until the 2010s when the game studio found their feet outside of making portable game ports and beginning to work on some Skylanders titles for console. This then led to what was probably the biggest title for the studio to date, where in 2017, Vicarious Visions, who were once responsible for the lesser known Game Boy Crash Bandicoot titles, I should add, would release the Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy a complete remaster of the original three Crash Bandicoot games originally created by Naughty Dog. Although a great deal of the game's success was down to the popularity of the original three games, the studio knocked the remaster out of the park. Faithfully remastering the levels, revamped with beautiful visuals and a wonderfully re-recorded soundtrack. Despite only being available on PlayStation 4 for the first year of its release, the game still managed to sell 10 million copies in less than two years. Despite using Naughty Dog's original level level geometry so they could faithfully recreate the levels that fans remembered so fondly. There was some mixed feelings about the hitboxes and crashes movements, providing higher difficulty in parts, especially levels such as the high road. Yeah, let's not talk about that level. I think this is the one level that people had the most like problems with. This and the other one. Is it the high road, the other one? Or is this the high road? Other than this, it was very well received, with most criticism coming from reviewers who didn't expect the harsh difficulty of the trilogy, which isn't really anything to do with the people who remastered it, is it? Like, some of these reviews are from people saying, well, I don't remember Crash Bandicoot being this difficult. What? Vicarious Visions poured so much love into this title, researching into the Crash community, getting fans to game test and provide feedback, making sure they got everything right. They even brought Stormy Ascent to life, a level similar to Slippery Climb, however this one was originally cut from the game because of how hard it was. They even made their own level for Crash Warped called Future Tense. This gave fans hope that the studio would be able to create their very own sequel to the trilogy. And although we got that later on in the form of 2020's Crash Bandicoot 4 It's About Time, the sequel wasn't developed by Vicarious Visions, but instead the Spyro Reignited Trilogy's Toys for Bob Studio, who still did a pretty incredible job. Although Vicarious Visions didn't work on the fantastic Crash Crash Team Racing Remake, despite the fact some of their levels and characters from Crash Nitro Kart were actually included. I wholeheartedly believe that their remaster of the original trilogy kicked off the revival for not only Crash Bandicoot, but Spyro the Dragon too. They truly were the guinea pig to see how people would react to their precious Crash games being remastered after all this time. And considering how positive the reaction was to their efforts, we then got the flawless Spyro Reignited trilogy, followed by the Crash Team Racing remake, and now Crash 4, and hopefully Spyro 4 too. Listen, I did love the original Spyro 4 as a kid, but that game was pretty bad. Whoa! Without the incredible work that Vicarious Visions put into the Insane Trilogy, we wouldn't be tearing our hair out at Crash 4 right now. And they didn't even work on that game. Come to think of it, if they did, it would probably be a little bit more forgiving. Recognizing their potential, and probably the amount of money they made, Activision then assigned a team to tackle another very precious remaster, this time in the form of the iconic Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and Pro Skater 2. It was almost as if Activision were spying on me, to find out which remasters I would pay the most money for, because I maybe bought the Deluxe Collector's Edition. <laughs> the Insane Trilogy didn't come with a skateboard though, so... 
Oh, but I did buy a PS4 to play it. And listen, I wasn't waiting a whole year for it to come to Xbox, okay? Despite not experiencing much of the first two Pro Skater games before this, this remaster was pulled off incredibly well. Beautifully transforming these polygon-ridden maps and bringing them to life in stunning HD. And much more impressively than Robomoda back in 2012. We won't talk about Pro Skater 5. Tony Hawk was back. And with an average of 88 out of 100 on all platforms from Metacritic, as well as many other positive reviews across the board, pardon the pun, fans of the skateboarding franchise, myself included, were extremely excited, quickly 100%ing both games, unlocking the secret characters, winning games of graffiti online, sometimes, and grinding the hundreds of challenges that were to complete. And this begged the question, what does this mean for the future of the Tony Hawk franchise? In almost any comment section about the game, fans begged for Pro Skater 3 and 4 next, or possibly as a DLC. We were talking about an Underground 1 and 2 remaster bundle, perhaps even American Wasteland. And with how successful the launch was, these wishes didn't seem to be sat too far out of the plane of reality. On September 14th, just 10 days after the launch of the game, it was announced on the Activision Blizzard Twitter account that it was the fastest Tony Hawk game to reach 1 million units sold in franchise history. This incredibly good news was celebrated on the Activision Blizzard Twitter account. What a fucking slap in the face. It appears that somehow 1 million sales in 10 days wasn't enough for Activision to want to keep Vicarious Visions leading the Tony Hawk revival. Surely it's got to be more complicated than that. It just seems insane to me that they would take them off this project and move them over to Blizzard to just be a support team if they made them this much money and this much success. I'm hoping this means that they're being pushed onto bigger and better things. However, it was pretty sad realizing that the way I found out about this merger was seeing Andy THPS share on Twitter. Andy is not only incredible at Tony Hawk, but he's also a game developer at Vicarious Visions. And seeing someone who is so passionate about that game series who finally got to work on this dream project, posting an article about the team being moved on to different things, it's just real sad. And what's also really sad is seeing that some of Vicarious Vision's final tweets before the merger include celebrating winning several awards, including Best Sports Game of 2020 by PlayStation. In the GamesIndustry.biz article shared by Andy, there is a quote from Activision saying, After collaborating with Vicarious Visions for some time and developing a great relationship, Blizzard realized there was an opportunity for them to provide long-term support. However, they declined to specify what this long-term support will be for, with many people on Twitter just assuming they'll become an asset factory for Overwatch 2. Despite being a big Overwatch fan for years, I'm gutted if this is what's in the future for Vicarious Visions. Perhaps the only good news from all this is that Jen O'Neill, the Vicarious Visions studio head, is being promoted to Blizzard's Executive Vice President of Development, now working alongside the rest of the Blizzard leadership team. This is a huge promotion for O'Neill. However, I hope she uses this opportunity to help her former team rather than leave them behind in the dust. <laughs> Apparently, the studio will remain in Albany, New York, which is also the hometown of Prince Daddy and the Hyena, my favorite band. <sighs> this video can't all be doom and gloom. It is so damn sad that Activision have done this to another promising studio. It's unclear what's gonna happen to the Tony Hawk franchise now that Vicarious Visions have been taken off the wheel for some reason. People are speculating that either Toys for Bob or maybe Beanox will take over. Both those studios also helped revive Crash Bandicoot with Toys for Bob doing Crash 4 and Beanox doing Crash Team Racing. Some people may recognize Beanox because they did work on the Pro Skater 1 and 2 remake. I'm not sure how much work they did on it. They have been working on the new Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War recently, which is a little bit worrying. Hopefully they don't suffer the same fate as those other fantastic studios because they really delivered on Crash Team Racing. On release day, that game was fantastic. And then for an entire year after, they were giving us constant updates and Grand Prix, new characters, new carts, new tracks. It was incredible. But the point of this video isn't just to ponder on the future of a franchise that Vicarious Visions worked so hard to reboot and so faithfully too, but more so to criticize Activision and how eager they are to turn any subsidiary of theirs into a support team. How many support teams do they need? 
That's a genuine question. So I just want to say thank you to Vicarious Visions for basically being the catalyst to why some of my favorite franchises are back and rebooted and remastered and looking the best they've ever looked. Without them, some of my favorite gaming experiences of the last few years just wouldn't have happened. Then Funny Nemo. Finding Nemo on the Game Boy Advance was genuinely sick. On behalf of everyone, I'm sorry that you've met the same fate as some fantastic studios before you also met. And I really hope that they're utilized well at Blizzard, so this whole merger wasn't for nothing. But thank you so much for watching the video, everybody. My name's been Brody, otherwise known as Knock. Sorry, I'm just getting the text. That's was from Activision. They just said, if you don't like the video, uh, they, they're going to merge you into a company, so. There's not really anything I can do about that, sorry. They didn't say anything about subscribing, but... I'd probably play it safe if I were you. Anyway, I'm going to go and play a game that's not by a money-hungry company like Activision now. See you later.